One of the things that I like to do with my SSIS package emails is to make them a little fancier than maybe just a text-based email or even if I'm going to use a text-based email I like to make it look good and I want to show you how to do that in this video we've done H, uh, the regular based email so far so already in the course we've done a couple of script tasks with emails I'm gonna just pull up a plain old script task uh, email uh, will kinda of flip-flop between Visual Basic and C Sharp here let's do VB first and so we'll just uh, hey I remembered and we'll just send a plain text email and I've got a temporary Gmail account that uh, we can use I'm going to need to bring in system.net and system.net.mail because those are well, they're important okay so you gotta do them and <laughs> So now we'll just create just a generic uh, email. So dim my email as a new mail uh, message. Sorry. And I'll tell you what, before I do that, dim my address um, equals Scott's temp email at gmail.com. And so I'm going to send it from that address to that address. Um, it's a demo video. What do you want? Uh, so now we need to just kind of change it up. We'll give it a subject. Oops, sorry. Well, from SSIS VB, and uh, we'll give it a body. Hey there. And to actually send this, then we have to bring in our, sorry, I'm just doing um, a new SMTP client. And um, for Gmail, what you're going to use is gmail.com and port 587. And so then you need to just set up your credentials. Uh, and that's going to be a new credentials. Um, network credential, sorry. And so the address and then my password. So my temporary password right now is just learn it first. And we need to enable SSL and we can send it. Did I zoom through that for you? Was that pretty fast? You know why? We've done it a bunch through the course uh, and it's not that difficult. Um, I, just because I'm sending it from and to myself, I store that in a variable. Uh, mail message class defines things like the body, uh, the to. We've defined here the from and the to. Um, and then this is our transport mechanism. So here's what we're sending, and this is how we are sending it. And the question is, what type of email is this, a text or an HTML-based email? This is just going to be a plain text email and flip over here it's probably here already if we go and sure enough it's just a plain text email not a whole lot uh, fancy to it okay so now that we have that we want to extend that ability we want to be able to send fancy emails we want to be able to send uh, an email that may come from a file an email whose contents may come from a web address so there's going to be two sections here that you'll want to pay close attention to. How to send email from a file and how to send email from a URL. Those are the two uh, that I find myself having to do. So here's what we'll do. We will create just a plain text file down here, uh, my email template. And you can make it HTML, you can make it text. I'll make this one text, I'll do the next one HTML, and now format it whatever you uh, like to do, however you want your emails. Uh, this is a fancy email from SSIS. Uh, make sure you do X, Y, and Z, and save it. 
So what I want to do is I actually want to not send this as an attachment. I want this to be the body of the email. Now I know this is silly. In the real world you wouldn't do something this silly. But what we would do in the real world, we would have SSIS generate a log file, an error file, a text file with some data in it, and then we would use that as the basis for our email. So let's go now. Let me show you how to. So that's VB plain email. So let's now come to our script task and we'll do a C sharp and let's do uh, text body from local file. There's going to be a difference between how you approach it if it's a file on the operating system versus an HTML page uh, or a web page that you have to use what's called a URI for. So I'm going to use C sharp for this one. Yeah, choose C sharp. And it's the same thing. I'm going to go ahead and just get all of my imports into play. And I'm going to go ahead and get my code to do the email in place first. May as well uh, go ahead and get that all set up here. So of our, my address. Right, same as VB, and so we'll set the subject, uh, I'm sorry, my email.subject equal from C sharp plain text. And uh, the body, ah, okay, let, let's hold off on the body, uh, and then we'll do our same SMTP here. which in the real world I'd probably store mail server and port in a variable and reference those. Uh, so uh, it's giving me grief because I have that part up there. Uh, we need to enable the SSL. What do we, um, the credentials. And our password. And so now we would just send it. So the only thing that will be left then is how do we define the body? We want to read the body from this myemailtemplate.txt. Copy that. I'll show you how to do it. So to do this, we're going to need to use the stream reader class. And we need to bring in IO. Uh, to do that. So here's what you're going to do. So you're just going to say, so you're going to open a text file. And which text file? And go ahead and just put that in a using clause so that it automatically closes and disposes of the reader when it's finished. We need in C sharp the at sign because otherwise we'll get a message saying that I don't know what slash capital M is as an escape character. Uh, we didn't have to put that. We could have just put two backslashes. Your choice, whichever way you want to actually do it. And so what we've done in this line is we're having the stream reader class open a text file and what we want to do is assign the body of our email equal to the entire thing. We want to read it to the end. So this is basically saying give me the entire contents of that, eight, that text file. And so we say OK. If you need to look at it, go ahead and pause the video here. Uh, again, for Visual Basic, this would be the same thing, um, minus a few things. So let's now send this one. Still a text-based email, right? We didn't do an HTML email. 
Uh, but there you go. It was able to, it didn't send it as an attachment. It sent it as the actual body content of the email. So where would I actually do this? I would do this in many, many different places. This is often, I'm going to be using a data flow task to generate a text file. Uh, it would be an audit file. It would be an error log file that has been generated earlier in my SSIS package. And now I want to send it as the body of an email. Maybe not as an attachment. I want to actually send it as the body. And once you have this basic code, which is attached to this video, then what you can do is you can start putting in substitution parameters. So you could start replacing certain values. I mean, you could, um, you know, call the replace, uh, or you could use uh, regular expressions to come up with very complicated uh, regex substitution schemes. Uh, this, though, gives you the basic idea of how to send plain text email. Okay, let's move to the next section then. Let's now do, where's my script task? Um, I'll do C sharp again. So HTML body from, uh, it's just really no different. We'll do a web file. So I'm really just going to copy and paste over here. This is the reason that I chose C Sharp here instead of VB, because I could uh, pretty easily copy and paste. Add my usings in same one, uh, system.io, system.net, system. Dot net dot mail. The difference is though, if I try to pass this in, like we'll grab the learnitfirst.com homepage. If I try to use that with a stream reader, I'm going to actually get a failure. And oops, close that guy out there. So I want to show you the error message and how to get around it. So if we try to execute this one, and I shouldn't have closed Gmail there. Uh, if we try to close this, if we take a look at the output, it says URI formats are not supported. And basically that's the stream reader. The stream reader is for working with local files or network files. Uh, it uses the UNC path or drive colon backslash, not a URI, like an FTP or an HTTP. So to do that, what you need to use is your, you've got to have a web request. So not really that much complexity, but a little bit different. So take this guy out here. So what we're going to do next is we need a request object. So uh, we need to make a web request. And to figure out what comes back as a result of the web request, and I'll do a visual basic version of this and, and put that also in the uh, download. We need to then get the response. So here in this line, we're making the request. And to actually process the response, we need an HTTP web response object. So we'll call that one response. And now to use the response, now we're going to use another using here. So we'll say um, uh, my stream is. So we'll just get a stream of the response. And actually, we're going to nest another using because we're going to need another reader here. So we'll get a stream reader based on that stream. And why do we wrap them inside of a using? Because it will implicitly close them and dispose of those objects once we finish with our curly braces. We didn't have to use using. We could have done it the long way if we wanted to.
Uh, but that's it. Notice that I didn't have to change the reader read to end part because it's still a stream reader. So let's go ahead, pause the video if you need to. And let's run this one. And this is actually going to look weird because Gmail is not going to execute things like JavaScript and uh, some of the CSS, the cascading style sheets that a web page like Learn at First homepage would use uh, is not actually going to come over here. However, notice that I forgot to change the subject and I forgot to change this from plain text. So because we put it in plain text, it actually sent us what would be an HTML file. So what we have to do, a couple of things. I need to change my subject. I meant to. That was a mistake. So down here, change that um, HTML file. And what we need to do is we need to tell it, tell the email object that the body is HTML. So we use the is body and move out of the way. Sorry about that. We tell it that it is an HTML based body. Run it again. Oh man, I sent all three. Which is fine. I just didn't mean to send all three. Uh, you can see they're all coming. Here's one more to come. There we go. And you see the difference. Again, it's looking a little bit odd because the images are not referenced correctly in this particular file. They are local referenced images uh, on the Learn It First page. Like, for example, um, the path to a particular image here is like, we go to Adams, um, I can see this easily. See how it shows that the address is listed as the full, what we would call the absolute path. If we actually take a look at the source code of this particular file, let's go to Adam, you can see that it uses a, what we would call a relative path. So there is no learn at first.com that's done by the web server. Well, when Gmail or when we use system.net.mail, it preserved whatever was in our HTML file. So if you are going to be sending HTML based emails, one option is to fully path all of the images to make sure that they have the HTTP, the complete absolute path to the actual image. That way you don't end up with something like this.